Never has there been a more exciting time to be alive, a time of rousing wonder and heroic achievement. As they said in the film, Back to the Future, where we're going, we don't need roads. Well, today, physicists peering into the infinitely small realms of subatomic particles find reaffirmations of religious faith. Astronomers build a space telescope that can see to the edge of the universe and possibly back to the moment of creation. So yes, this nation remains fully committed to America's space program. President Ronald Reagan is not the only chief executive to promise Americans they would be at the forefront of space exploration. And he is not the only one to believe that by this date, we should be walking the sand dunes of Mars and even looking for the first excellent location for a red planet chain of convenience stores. And we're still a long way from getting there, but maybe, just maybe, one piece of equipment about the size of a washing machine may have given us hope of boldly going somewhere in our lifetime. Welcome back to Midpoint, former White House Space Program Advisor, consultant to NASA headquarters, space shuttle engineer, also author of the fascinating book, Dark Winter, How the Sun is Causing a 30-Year Cold Spell. John Casey joins us again. John, always a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Ed, good to be back, sir. John, here we have. Phil A has landed. Of course, the spacecraft is now no longer operating. But in the short time it had power to send things back, is it really possible to glean enough to make this mission a success? I think it's already a great success, Ed. If you look at the 10-year program and the vast distances that it covered in space using the Earth three different times to add propulsion to the craft, the intricate series of maneuverings that was done to include actually landing, that alone was a major success for the human race and certainly the European Space Agency. Does the fact that we also got some data back is really inspiring. Now, what did we learn here? Because apparently I'm hearing that it quote unquote sniffs the molecules in space uh, with some of the, the instruments that it has, that they were able to find something, correct me if I'm wrong, they might have found carbon actually as a part of the, of, of the, the rock itself? That's correct. One of the uh, sniffers, if you will, on board the Philae lander was able to detect the presence of carbon, although the exact nature of the carbon molecules and anything more complex has yet to be uh, discerned, the data is still being analyzed. Unfortunately, as we all know, the uh, position of the lander did not allow the solar arrays to be powered, so the Philae is temporarily shut down, but now, we are looking at the data. When you said temporarily shut down, that's one thing I don't think a lot of people talk about here because isn't it proper, and again, boy, I'm not a space guy here, I'm just one who kind of likes to do it and talks geekage here, but is it possible that as the comet gets closer to the Earth and the Sun that it will rotate, the panels will be able to get power again and we may get more communication? That is certainly the hope of the landing team and the rest of the folks at the European Space Agency. As the sun nears, or the uh, comet uh, 61P nears the sun, we'll have two effects. We'll not only get more sunlight and hopefully power the solar arrays, but unfortunately, if we get too close, it'll destroy the Philae lander itself. And of course, the comets tend to uh, blast off a lot of uh, dust and gas as they get closer to the sun. So we've got a, a delicate window of opportunity coming up. Got about a minute left, then we'll take a break, talk about the American space program here. But fair to say that we're not expecting to find life on something like this. What you're looking for is basically you'd like to find some amino acids, some basic building blocks, if you will. And can you really discern that from that distance and with using instruments that are this far away? Ed, that was exactly what the intent of the mission was. There are a number of uh, sophisticated scientific uh, analytical platforms, both on the orbiting OSIRIS and the Philae lander. So yes, that was the intent, was to define those complex molecules that some think uh, are the beginnings of life. We'd have to find a little bit more because certainly we found hydrocarbons on other asteroids, so we'd have to find a little bit more to get to the, the, the life connection, right? Exactly. All right, but we still have time and there's still a possibility, okay. Uh, and just going 10 years to figure out how to get there is amazing to me as well. Uh, stick around because we're gonna break. We return with John Casey. We're gonna focus on the American space program. What's left of it? And what, if anything, it will become in the near future? What can it become? And at 51 minutes after the hour, we're gonna have to head for Outland. And yet another reminder of why some people here on Earth should never, ever, ever 
be given the chance to spread their seed around the galaxy. We fear that. So that's why we tell you about the people in Outland so that hopefully we can say, not these folks, all right? Stick around. Midpoint continues right here.